this is uh, Margaret N. Windsor, and uh, that's my real name. And the name that I have to use is Peggy Ann Dempsey. I married a children's. Uh, I've given all the background information over and over uh, on YouTube for over a year now since the Alexis uh, Murphy disappearance. And, and they still haven't found her body. And this was back in, um, what, August of last year? Yeah, the 3rd. And I got, I've had no access to attorney or law enforcement has, I cannot go to them. So I took to the social media when I got this to YouTube. And I had um, uh, been on Facebook for a couple of years now at least, yeah, about a couple. But what I wanted to add today is I've been talking about mind control murders that really started and well, let's say brought to my attention back in 70, I just did not know the mechanism used. It's mind control, which is invisible and hard to prove. God knows how many murders and deaths have been from my, the use of mind control, programming and, and decision making. Um, uh, you will never know. My point is, over the years, I've been up in Roanoke, Virginia, since uh, the 20th of October of 86. And before then, I worked for the district attorney in Huntsville, Alabama in 80, and that was after I had antifreeze put in me on April Fool Day of 80 and should have died. And I was illegally taken across the state line, but then I worked for Fred Simpson, the DA. That's when John Lennon was murdered by Mark David Chapman. <clears throat> Prior to that, I was doing the book at Moonraker Apartment, and this is what I want to finish this today with. I lived at Moonraker Apartment in Marietta. It was owned by, previously owned by Penthouse Magazine, and uh, it was owned by the Mormon Church out of Utah when I lived there. Uh, there's a warning, Rosina Matthews were forensic pathologist at Larry McDonald's Hospital. I was writing about their murders, and Gene Srokerman was gunned down at Piedmont Hospital on Christmas Eve of, I believe, 76 or 77, I'm not sure. Anyway, I was writing about this, and uh, there were uh, things connected to Emory University and Center for Disease Control, the very ones, the Ebola and uh, the um, AIDS. Uh, everybody's going back to them. Well, I'm not going to get into that. I, I put it on other tapes and on Facebook. But what I wanted to finish up today is they've just found a body, and I'm not sure it's Hannah Elizabeth Graham. She's English citizen from England, and she was at uh, a student at University of Virginia. Her murder was just a long list in these that have been done using mind control and by an agency of the law enforcement. Now then, if you think I'm condoning anything, I think Americans have to be held accountable for their crimes. And they're the ones that's really committed these crimes and allowed them to happen. And I'm not sure they're not going to cover this one up. It's a mind control murder. And the three that are in uh, line here started with Alexis Murphy. And then there's one in between, and because of their family uh, ties here, I'm not going to say anything else about that. Uh, but anyway, Hannah, I am so sorry. I'm English, and I was kidnapped and brought to this country in 41, and my identity stolen. So, uh, And I'm a hostage here in plain sight. Told about all this, Larry Flint was shot in Lawrenceville. I want to say that because uh, people kind of even did an endorsement in April of 84 and said I knew who was responsible for his killing. Lawrenceville, Georgia is not far from where I lived in Marietta, Georgia. The person that shot Larry Flint was programmed to shoot him and kill his attorney. And there's a long, long listing of British and uh, how many Brits and Germans and uh, people from other countries have died. But, and I've told about uh, the connections to, to the CDC, but I'm going to leave that alone for a moment. What I wanted to finish here was I'm so afraid they're going to cover up the Hannah 
I thought sure they were going to tell her. They found the body, and they've sent it to Richmond, and they have basically told her parents have called off the hunt for her, and uh, so they must think it's her. The media is still not touching this. They've known about my kidnapping before I did, probably so far back. And since the, the Rockefellers, Rothschilds, the Freemasons, the ones that control your media uh, were a part of my kidnapping, well, I'm not sure they would tell it anyway because the truth would really, uh, well, the truth would take down this country, I think. How about trying the truth for a while before it's too late, though? What I wanted to say is in this, law enforcement um, got things on people. Everybody has something to hide, whether it's uh, internal revenue they stick on them because they've got things wrong with their taxes or their kid uh, was drunk at the wheel or had drugs on them. That's one of them I know that was used and a number of things. But anyway, people had no right in return for the agency doing this or in charge of doing it uh, to drop the charges against whoever, their son, their daughter, or to keep their daughter from being kidnapped. I've been told that. Now put that on other uh, tapes. They would engage in doing things against me. And I wanted to use an example that I was thinking of today. Um, when I worked at, uh, this is in 77, I think I began working there March or April, May of 77. I worked for Forsyth, Kutcher, and uh, McCoy. And one of them was cardiovascular, inter cardiovascular internist. The rest of them were internists, the other two. I did books and would fill in as receptionist. But the thing is that we're, uh, it was a brand new office there at um, Northside, across from Northside Hospital. And I went in there just as it was being, um, it was still under construction as a matter of fact. My point is that the next job I had after I left Forsyth and Coochie, I worked there a year at least or more and got a letter of recommendation. They knew I was doing the book. And uh, I left. And the next job I had for just a short period of time was for Dixon Tomato. I think they later called it Dixon Produce. It makes it sound like they were a little bitty place. They weren't. They shipped in produce from Mexico, et cetera. So they weren't small. But I went to work there. It was just down from uh, Moonraker uh, on Powers Ferry, just off Delk Road. And when I went there, it was a corporate office, which was small, kind of, I thought at the time. But the lady who was the head bookkeeper or accountant um, said to me, deliberately, she was told to, she showed me a medical record and was telling me where the doctor I just worked for, Forsyth, who was cardiovascular, had put an implant, a chip, in a heart bypass for Dr. Fairshow. I believe that's how his name was pronounced. It's been so long, but he was either chairman of the board or president. Gary Dixon was the son of the founder. Uh, that, well, I guess he would have been chairman of the board. Anyway, Mr. Fairshow was next to the top. And so the implant was put in him, and the point being that you could murder him, have him commit suicide, or... But most of all, his decision-making. He's head of a corporation. He thinks he makes the decision when actually it's being made by someone else, like someone else can fly an airplane because they got the pilot control or the controller. So this is what's going on. But anyway, uh, she also told me, I've forgotten her last name. That's been a long time ago. But they, they, they she didn't say who. She said they killed her husband, Russell. So... Uh, now then, I want to skip to, I'm doing the book and living at Moonraker, and my kids and I are being, it's beyond belief. It's like attempted murder. I had a bomb that was, uh, they thought a bomb was put in my car, and the key was, uh, the key where you put it in was ignition was sheared, and the car door was sheared. And uh, my book was under the uh, seat, and it was, just, it was taken out. 